To learn more about the Elevator Radio Show, including today's program notes, visit elevatorradioshow.com. You're tuned in to the Elevator Radio Show, a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Whenever you're listening to the program, welcome to the Elevator Radio Show. Appreciate everybody's comments last week about not having a show. It was just one of those weeks that was just too busy and got a crud load of stuff done, which was perfect. Today and this week is probably around the same thing, but it is just is what it is. But didn't want to go too long without putting a show out. Uh, because I do it for all of you out there who listen to the program. Hey, if you're in the Midwest, uh, Chicago specifically, or the southern part, man, you got, we got Cloudbird on Sunday with a pretty significant snowstorm, which then melted yesterday, which was the kind of snow I thought was kind of nice to have. So hopefully spring is on its way, and uh, we'll see more of those kind of warmer temperatures as the weeks and days uh, progress. Got a good show for you today. We're going to have you out of here in... Uh, in probably about 20 minutes, which I think should be a pretty good program in my opinion. So uh, stay tuned. We will have the show notes of the program up next. And as always, if you have questions about the program, like to send an email or a comment, email address is elevatorradioshow at gmail.com or go to the Facebook page, post a link or a post or a comment or whatever, and uh, I'll try to respond to those as quickly as I possibly can. So up next, the news for this week's program. Let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena. Each news segment is organically dug and fresh with news stories of the week. Got lift? If not, stay tuned. So today's program has quite a few different articles on it. Um, unfortunately, there were there were a handful of accidents involving workers, those uh, general riding public, uh, escalators, elevators, some of which just had me scratching my head wondering exactly what the root cause of those were. In addition, there were also, there's also a pretty interesting story, which I'll get in the program and have more comments to share on it uh, shortly, about an escalator uh, case in Canada that involved their Supreme Court, which I was like, wow, hmm, interesting. Uh, so anyway, we'll get right into it. Okay, first article, DC elevators um, had to go in and uh, basically... G- remove or act, I, don't, I don't know what the correct terminology is I don't want to say alleged or whatnot and just as a reminder this program the news content that's found within it in my commentary basically are all my commentary in terms of a legal perspective I have no expertise in terms of I don't know if any lawyer or attorney wants to depose me for whatever reason uh, uh, please don't bother. It's not worth anybody's time. And uh, these are all my comments. They are specific, you know, just my comments as I as I see stuff, and it's not necessarily correct. It's not necessarily uh, right. And just just shedding some light, just sharing my own opinions. And uh, so, if if by any means it it opens your eyes and it makes you think about some of these articles we talk about, by all means, share those with your colleagues, your coworkers, and. Uh, by doing so, hopefully we'll get a better uh, better idea of, of how to prevent stuff from happening and make the industry that we're in uh, much safer to begin with. So this actually, this incident happened at the Kennedy Center elevator shaft. Uh, firefighters, District of Columbia firefighters had to uh, remove three college students about 30 feet up a shaft using raising gear uh, after the elevator had stalled at the Kennedy Center. And just as a reminder... 
the correct terminology when an elevator stops no longer moves it is stalled it is not broken it is not uh, well it could be broken i guess in how you see it but um and that's really the best place and safest place that you can we can, you can be until either first responders arrive or uh, an elevator mechanic or repairman can help out and uh, in in getting the elevator running again so yeah so it's kind of a significant um removal of passengers you don't see this every day but glad everybody's okay and uh, nobody was nobody was injured uh next news article elevator under elevators undergo one million dollars in renovations this is coming from usforacle.com i believe this is an article talking about a university at um actually i'm not sure where this is at i did try to find this out but it wasn't ex- it wasn't exactly forthcoming in in uh, what it was talking about but anyway you kind of wish that in some instances you get a little more information than what is just put into the article because when you read this, uh, this housing and residential education is replacing all of the motors and the elevators. Andrew Johnson, director of operations and outreach for HRE, said that each motor costs about $200,000, including installation, which is a lot of money, obviously. And I don't necessarily think the motors themselves cost $200,000, installation possibly, but I'm sure there's more to this might be the new machines or whatnot, but it'd be kind of cool to see more types, you know, more information released in these kind of articles because when you read it and you're thinking $200,000 for a motor, that doesn't seem quite right. (laughs) There are motors that cost that much. Not too many when it comes to the elevator industry. And I know that labor is high to put stuff like that in, but again, I don't know whether or not that's that, that, um, that number is quite quite accurate, but I'm not quite sure. I'm sure the number is accurate. What's being done for that amount is is another another question. Um, okay, press release or an article from the Atlanta uh, Journal. Oh, it looks like they've got some uh, some traffic there in Atlanta. But apparently, a Tissonkrupp elevator is not only building the tallest tower of its kind in the U.S. for its North American operations, but it's also been awarded two elevators to Cobb County Government Building in downtown Marietta. And uh, so that's pretty cool. And there's a photo of what that Tyson Center is going to look like. It looks pretty darn cool, to be honest with you. It's all glass, got some some significant architectural features on the outside. So looking forward to seeing that when that's, uh, when that's completed. Next news article... Bear with me here. I'm going to see this caution escalator signage all over and over if you're watching the YouTube of the YouTube feed. Um, okay, so this is the article I was talking about earlier. Supreme Court hears case of woman find arrested for not holding escalator handrail. And in Canada, basically the question that she has uh, gone to the, their Supreme Court with, uh, and let me just back up for a minute to explain a little bit more about this article or the story. Apparently this woman was refusing to hold the handrail while riding the escalator back in 2009 or 2010, 10, 2009, 2010. She protested, was arrested, and basically given a fine for $100. I believe that was the amount. Uh, well, the reality is is that you can't fix or stop stupid, and you can't, you know, from a government standpoint, you can't stop stand in the way of people that are just belligerent in wanting to fight safety or the government, and perhaps this has more to it than that. But the, the, the question came or was presenting to the Supreme Court whether or not the placards, the safety information on an escalator is indeed a law or it is a requirement or if it is simple safety advice. In the United States, it is simple safety device. The day that the government comes out and says, we are going to fine you for not holding the handrail, well, a good idea, and if that's the only way we can stop stupid from from happening, seems like it would be a good idea, but at the end of the day, government should not be there um, and I'm going to, I'm not going to say this correctly because government is there to protect us obviously against drunk driving, very serious offenses. But when you have accidents that occur as a result of not, of not following safety rules or safety recommendations, then the question is posed, well, then who is responsible ultimately? And it should be the person that, you know, falls down an escalator acts, you know, hurting other people, 
So it's kind of a you know tricky slope. I was just surprised to see that the Supreme Court in Canada actually was going to be looking at this. They figured they'd have a, t- uh, a response back in a month, uh, whether or not the safety information on this escalator is indeed uh, should be followed by law or whether or not it should uh, just be provided as safety information. So, yeah, just interesting. I, I, you know, and I think when it comes to the possibility of injuring or hurting others, I would believe that a law is definitely a much better, uh, better thing to uh, to look at, and uh, which you know also it be for enforceable. But yeah, it's kind of interesting. Next news article, and this kind of relates to the other one. I did find a company ESD signage in uh, the UK. And I, I do realize that in, in the United States or North America, I guess they say United States, maybe Canada, the, the way that safety signage is, in fact, shared or placed on escalators, there's a code that relates to that in terms of how signage cannot be a distraction, one, either getting on the escalator or getting off, and doing so, even though it seems like a good idea, may not be something that's feasible, Um on the escalator itself, but in, in all reality, these kinds of signage that are shown by this company, M, uh, myesd.com in Manchester, UK, you know, I mean, if we have to look at making signage bigger, uh, not necessarily you can read it, but maybe this is these are the types of steps we got to look at uh, in going in to try to get the message out rather than the smaller safety placards that are found, even in, you know, the in between the escalators or, or you know, it's lower down um, on the units themselves. Uh, but I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, next news article. British Columbia knew about housing issue, uh, ele- sorry, elevator problems at Vancouver Affordable Housing Building 2015. You know, I think anybody who is in the, uh, is in the affordable housing industry completely understands whether their elevators have issues or not. So I'm not quite sure whether or not or why this was such an article, but what I got a chuckle out of here was the signage that residents had put up regarding the elevator. I mean, somebody has way too much time on their hands (laughs) with pictographs. If you take a look at the article, this is the, I don't know, sixth or seventh one down there. But uh, one of those realities or or that the, the elevators are no longer are you know serviceable and at the end of the day if there's any question about that call in a consultant you know get get a get a second opinion before having to go um you know go into a full elevator modernization the reality is is that older equipment is getting more difficult to maintain get parts for etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah and, and and if you're in the affordable housing market or industry you, you know you're you know most likely elevators in many cases, and I don't want to generalize, have been neglected either by uh, rec- um, recommended upgrades, uh, et cetera, et cetera, due to funding because they're expensive, bottom line. Um, so, okay, man, a mobility scooter falls three full floors in Toronto. This man is lucky to be alive. Uh, investigators are t- still trying to figure out what exactly happened. Um, they're trying to figure out how a 45-year-old man in a mobility scooter fell three floors down an elevator shaft in a downtown Toronto on Thursday. I think we all have an idea of what possibly might have happened. Um, yeah, it's ter- terrifying. Yeah, so anyway, read that in the, in the show notes. Again, I'm not going to comment or share my opinions on what might have happened because I just don't have enough information I'm, and I'm not doing that. So, um, but I'm glad he's, he's going to be okay, but still scary as heck. Okay. Next is our veterans in uh, get elevator for their VFW hall. And, uh, you know, when it comes to veterans, veterans need to definitely be taken care of. They do. I swear to you, it drives me crazy when, I read articles about veterans not getting the care that they deserve, whether it's a VA hospital or if there's funding that's lacking or if there's a veteran that's homeless. Uh, I have, uh, we have two veterans here at work, and I love them both. They're both great people and uh, extremely hard workers, and I enjoy listening to their stories and uh, have a great deal of respect for both of those individuals that I work with each and every day. So 
Um, anyway, so good news here. It's nice to see the VFW Hall in Elk Grove Village, Illinois, is getting a new, well, getting an elevator for, uh, and they're hoping that that will help bring some of their members back who may have mobility issues. Uh, next news are four injured after man falls over on escalator. Okay, this is uh, an incident that occurred in the UK. Four injured after man falls over on escalator at a Cornbow shopping center in Halsling. I probably mispronounced all of that, but apparently an, an elderly man collided with three other shoppers when he fell down the moving staircase in Cornbow. Uh, scary. And again, this goes back to the article we were just talking about in Canada where you know, ultimately, if, if somebody's not doing what they're supposed to, are they liable? And the other, the other issue is, um, can it be enforced either by a camera that shows the person not doing that? I don't know. I mean, at what point do we need, you know, at what point are too many signs enough? And I don't, I, yeah, it's, it's not good, but um, just scary. And that can happen. Uh, apparently, there was a snake removed from my ceiling at the Oswego dorm in Syracuse Doc, um, University, or I think that was Syracuse or SUNY. Don't see that every day, but uh, photo op for a police officer <laughs> and two students. So, yeah, I'm sure many of you out there who have been in the industry, mechanics, technicians, have many different stories or many more stories you could share about what you found in the hoistway. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, next news article. A woman injured in an elevator accident. This is this happened in a Erie High School, Pennsylvania. Apparently a woman was injured when she was backing into an elevator with a cart. The elevator is about a foot below the level of the floor, and as the doors opened, um, she fell down and hurt her back. That's scary. It sounds like it might have been a hydraulic elevator that just, you know, just sunk down. It just didn't have auto leveling on it or something. But, yeah, it's, it's scary. You're not expecting that to happen um, ever on an elevator, but you do definitely have to keep an eye out and, and look for stuff to make sure that kind of thing doesn't happen. Uh, next news article. Elevator access solution released. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, okay. So this is a press release from securitysales.com, which is kind of a security access entity or website or whatever it is. Uh, but apparently some company has released uh, some kind of elevator board that makes accessibility, not accessibility, but security easier. I, to me, it's all gobbledygook a little bit. But I know iot or internet of things as well as wi-fi bluetooth is all coming to fruition i know our industry has been a little bit relaxed in 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 adopting anything like that mainly because the elevator codes need to need really to look at these types of devices and ensure that uh rf you know radio frequencies aren't interrupting safety systems stuff like that so it's just uh but it's interesting so it's you you think that there are systems out there that can provide solutions like that um but anyway okay the age.com in australia broken escalator at the already chaotic southern cross station has been responsible for train diversions and massive elevator queues for days and it continue it will continue on for days more look at this image if you're if you're watching the uh youtube channel and if not if you're listening to the program go back this so this image and those of you that are just listening to the show um, there are three escalators side by side and what they're missing are stairs. Any architect that does not put stairs in between escalators is not designing a system quite right. I got to tell you that escalators when they are not working are not automatically stairs, although maybe in Australia they, they are. Um, in the United States, they do not have the same rise and run as are required by building code. Um, so, man, if you can imagine diverting trains because people can't get up from the platform or they're in a queue to use an elevator for days, that is a serious safety concern when you absolutely think about that. If escalators, and I don't know if this is the case for this station, but if elevators and escalators are the only way to access up, and they shouldn't be, I guarantee there's another you know exit way out of that uh, that platform station, but... It should be more, it should definitely be open more um, 
you know, and, and, and uh, available to, to the uh, general running public. That's, that's my perspective on that. Okay, a man on a cargo cart dies in elevator accident. Of the details listed in this report, it appears that the man was trying to get into a freight elevator with doors that were biparting, maybe, or going up and down. Um, where did this happen? Japan and Tokyo at the fish market. A 50-year-old transportation worker on a turret truck had hurried to get into the cargo elevator on the first floor of the market as the elevator door was closing vertically. Shortly after midnight Sunday, the police said footage from a sur- uh, surveillance cam showed he was taken to the hospital but later confirmed dead. So, uh, yeah, it's scary. Yeah, so they're trying to prevent similar accidents. The reality is, is that, you know, do not try to get into an elevator when the doors are closing. Even if they're passing your car, do not put your hands any part of your body to stop the beam because it's just not good practice to do that. And doing so, you actually uh, you actually uh, show others it's okay. So let the doors close. Get on the next ride. Okay, readers, thumbs down on plan for O'Hare's global airport or terminal. Apparently, this is a Chicago Tribune. This is um, regarding a global terminal they're proposing to be put in, but apparently... One of the main focus features of it is that the number of escalators will be significant. And that spun a variety of responses back regarding escalators in general. And you can read all those in the link. I didn't realize there were <laughs> there were many, many, many people that wanted to comment about escalators in general. And uh, it's just lots of lots of hate and, and scare out there, unfortunately. And uh, just the reality of the world we live in today. I wonder how it's going to change in the next 10 years. Speaking of which, just to digress <laughs> just shortly, I'm amazed. I've been watching the uh, Netflix series of all the different decades, you know, like the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, uh, 2000s, and I forgot so much stuff that went on during those decades. I love, you know, because I grew up in that, those, that, those, that whole time frame, and it's it's fascinating to me. History, to me, is, is fascinating. Um but what the latest, you know, 2000s shared of the point of the whole, you know, that decade is just how, how do I say this without it coming across as being a total jerk? We have become this, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say it right. I know I'm not going to say it right. Uh, instant gratification is basically we come at, it, we become people of instant gratification with our phones and what we expect with Amazon Prime, all that stuff. And the reality is, is that I don't know how much more instant gratification people are going to be looking for after, you know, we've been subject to what we have now, you know. And and to see in the 2000s just how that technology was not quite there. It was just starting to develop with the Blackberries and all that. I mean, we've lived through so much. I mean, and I and I... Even my kid, our kids have lived through so much that it's amazing to imagine a world without technology. But at the same time, it was, it was, an, I think it was a nicer time, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, anyway, didn't mean to digress that, but I would recommend all those series. I definitely recommend it. If you got Netflix and you want to watch, watch those. Okay, uh, IAC 2009 re- renal forum is fast approaching. It's in a couple of weeks, so haven't registered for that. I'm, I'm not going to be able to attend that. I got a wedding on that Saturday. That uh, it's a very important wedding, not for myself, but um, I'm looking forward to that on that Saturday. Just could not make that work, unfortunately. So I will not be seeing so many favorite people of mine uh, in Nevada. I would love to be there though. Uh, next news article, CEA Night at the Races. If you're interested in supporting the Chicago Liver Association and their fifth annual scholarship fundraiser, please do so. That will be held on May 10th, 2019. Uh, apparently it's earlier this time, which is cool, 2 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. with hopes of getting more people there, I imagine. Um, Hawthorne Racetrack, and you can register by clicking the link through the website. The sponsorship opportunities are also within the registration link. You just got to get through it to do that. Next news article. Uh, Historical commission rejects plan to add elevator. What I liked about this article, and this is coming from the Danville News, 
is that this historical jail uh, has rejected plans to an elevator um, to add an elevator because they do not want to place the taxpayer under any unnecessary permanent um, tax demands with maintenance, with installation, and all that stuff. So I think part of them is looking to uh, the possibility of tearing it down and making a much more user-friendly, uh, accessible uh, building because. You know, you put an elevator in and you're probably triggering a whole bunch of other types of um, building code upgrades uh, that somebody might be not thinking about as well. But I, I, I like the I like the planning process and the reason for not doing that. KElevatorU.org, their online registration is open for the 2019 um, uh, conference. So go ahead and click on the, there's a booklet link, the agenda link. Those are on the main page if you were interested in uh, finding out what that's all about. Um, as soon as that opened up, I was amazed at how many people registered for it, which is awesome. And I'm looking forward to going to Charlotte, North Carolina. Information is in the show notes. And the last news article of the show, if you're in need of QEI educational credits, uh, visit NASA, uh, NASAI.org or NAESA. NAESAI.org, and you can find a whole bunch of um, educational opportunities that are coming up if you are in need of your QEI certification uh, requirements. So, pretty cool. And that's going to do it for the show, everybody. Didn't mean to linger as much as I did, but it was great to be back. Uh, think spring, be safe out there, and that's it. So, have a great rest of the week. Uh, nice weekend, and be safe. Take care. Bye bye. 